All right, we're back. As you can tell here, I've gone through and done a lot of the tedious, slow uh, outlining of a lot of the uh, uh, detail we've carved in. Right here, I missed a few spots. We'll go ahead and cover that now. Oh shoot, brush too wet. Make sure you keep a brush dry on detail work, otherwise it bleeds into the wood like it's doing now. We're going to paint over it with a dark color anyway, so it's not that big a deal. I've gone through, done all this painstakingly slow detail work, and we're going to go through and do the uh, overall base layer now. I don't know if it's just me or the lighting of this room, but it looks like the color of the shoulders in here is different from here for some reason. I don't know if that's just me. When I go back and look at this video, I'll see, but uh might be something I need to touch up. But let's go ahead and start painting. Let's see where's our beer brush. Alright, we are gray. I use a little bit smaller brush around these areas we've already done, like the shoulders. That's got a lot of detail. Plus, that's a completely different type of paint, different shade of paint. Hopefully, we get the proper angle on this camera. I had to soak these uh, brushes last night in turpentine to get them to soften up. They're all crusty, so I didn't properly clean them. I'm used to working with these acrylics, and they just clean up real easy in water. You just uh, rinse them out real good when you're done, and then I usually let them sit overnight in a little cup of water. The next day, they're good to go. Well, the paints we're using for the face, they just stiffen the brushes up for some reason. So, be mindful what paints you use, I guess. That way you know uh, the proper way to clean your brushes out. I'm not a painter by any means. Uh, the most painting I do is here on these and some of the fish I make. I do taxidermy work too. That's a whole different type of painting. But we're trying to do the same thing with this is keep it a little thin. That way where we've detailed it with the black, once it dries, it'll just barely show through to, to, to highlight where we've carved it. But I think you can see it pretty well just by itself. That's why you go ahead and do the work. Save you some paint. You put the work into it and then it should show through. And I thought of a uh, really hard about how to incorporate some sort of real materials other than wood into this like I do some other carvings but he's just a character where there was no way to do that unless maybe somebody who's a, a really big fan could point that out to me and maybe when I do the second one I can do it to that one because he was he was a tough carving, so I'm not going back and doing that second one anytime soon. Unless there, there's some big reason why I should go back and do it. But as of right now, it'll be left for for another time. One of those rainy day projects where you're bored and got nothing to do, I guess. Because I have that second head made already, so if I wanted to, I could just uh, pop it on there and not even have to carve up the face. 
But do tell me which face y'all like better. I'll do a side by side once we're done. Just to remind you all the, the differences between the two. That first one I did, the test one, when I was testing out this camera, it, it was close. Uh, I really thought about just go ahead and using it, but when I got into this and started uh, carving the face on the body, and then it just got away from me somehow, and it just it was looking horrible. I just thought about, okay, let's try and carve another one and see how that looks if I can't fix any of the other things I didn't like on that first one, and I think this, this final head turned out really good. But it does uh, aggravate me a little bit that I couldn't keep it a, a solid piece. I try and keep all my carvings one solid piece of wood. That way I don't have to glue and attach anything. But in some circumstances, uh, it's better to do that than turn something out that you, you're not happy with. Because it's still all wood carved, all done by hand. It's from the same block of wood, it's just not one solid piece of wood. By the time we're finished with it though, uh, with the type of glue we use and the, that wire, uh, it won't move anywhere. I mean, you'd have to try pretty hard to, to break it off. And once again, hopefully these camera angles are, are good for you guys. I'm trying hard to... to keep it in mind as I'm doing this. You get so used to not worrying about a camera and worrying about a third eye essentially that you just get caught up doing things the way you normally do it and that's how I've got some bad camera angles here recently. Like I said, once we get this done, hopefully you guys like it because I thought about this one more for uh for any viewers than I did myself. Like I said, I watched the show. I own the seasons and all. I do enjoy the show, but I'm I'm not a huge fan. It's a it's a really cool show. It's the best um, medieval period piece type thing I've seen my whole life. I mean, there's other good ones out there, but this is the best one. But I just feel the way they pace the show is more to get viewership than it is to really progress the story. That's my whole issue is, is the, the money aspect. Is they could actually give you an even better show if it wasn't for uh, trying to bring you back for each episode and bring you back for each season and all that nonsense. But they got a business to run, so I can see it from their perspective. But when I want to be entertained, I want to be entertained. That's and that's why you watch television and movies is for the entertainment aspect, not the red tape that HBO and all of them have to deal with. But like I said, I'm not hating on the show. It's a really cool show. a lot of cool characters. I wish they uh, would try and work out a deal with um, the, the writer of the book, what is his name, um, Martin. I wish they would work with him and see if they can't do some sort of spinoff on maybe the origins of the, the White Walkers and stuff because they're the, the coolest characters to me. I mean, everybody's seen dragons before. And that's one thing I'm, I wasn't really super impressed with the dragons on the show. I mean, they're cool and all. I mean, all dragons are cool. But, wasn't as impressed. And it took forever to finally get the damn dragons to a point where they were actually worth watching. I mean, nobody wants to watch a bunch of baby dragons. I mean, what can they do? But the White Walkers, uh, ever since the very first episode is what really intrigued me. It was that cool and a, a new creature that we haven't seen before. But as I hear it, this guy we're doing here, the Night King, in the show, 
is not even the same one referred to in the book. But that's how adaptations go. That's why I've never read the books. Because I've, I've watched the show first. And it's I think it's tainted what uh, I would envision. If you, if you read the book first, you can envision it in your mind. And then when you watch the show, I think you get a better appreciation for the books. But if you watch the show first, I think it, it disrupts any kind of visualization you could have. So that's the whole reason I haven't read the books. But he's still churning books out, so maybe I'll just skip past the originals and go to the new ones. Who knows? Maybe if any of you uh, Game of Thrones fans watch this, you can recommend that for me. Should I, should I get the books or not? I'm sure the books are much better than the uh, show because most things I've seen that were based on books the book is always more detailed and just all around better than any adaptation can ever be because they take their own liberties with uh, movies and television shows what they think will give them more views and stuff I don't know man, how many Stephen King movies I've heard that Stephen King himself just can't stand. Like apparently uh, The Shining with Jack Nicholson, which I actually love that movie. I think it's a really cool movie. Cinematography, the suspense, the, the, the score, everything just kind of really gives you a really cool atmosphere. And I only watch it during the winter when it's snowing. I call it the 4D effect. I will only watch certain movies during certain times of the year so you can actually feel the uh, the atmosphere of it. Like a couple other good movies to watch during like winter time when it's super cold is um the thing and the uh, prequel to the thing. Especially if it's got snow outside. Great, great movies. So I recommend giving that try, people. Anybody watching this? When you're wanting a movie night, if you can uh, remember to think about a movie that'll give you that 4D feel for a hot day, think of, of a movie that uh, has a real hot um, kind of overall plot, like Tremors. I watch uh, the movie Tremors with the, the graboids, the big worm creatures that come out of the ground. I watch them during the summertime because it gives you that that 40 feel I don't recommend any of the other Tremors movies because oh they got they got terrible didn't they if anybody knows what I'm talking about I mean if you're just nostalgic about the original and just a fan that Burt character was a pretty good character when he uh came in the other movies but he got a little, he just got a little too corny with it, and that's how a lot of movies nowadays get when they carry too many sequels, is they just get way off base of what the original was, and just get corny. And I think it was Tremors 3, somebody really overlooked the design and the color of the great white graboid, because he looks like a male appendage if you know what I mean look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about I believe it's Tremors 3 the great white graboid he calls him El Blanco looks like a gigantic male appendage how did people let that get past uh, editing and screening and all that without somebody mentioning it or maybe they did it on purpose as like an inside joke who knows That, that was actually a character I thought about uh, Carvin one day as is one of the graboids from that uh, from that movie. So I guess it just kind of popped in my head because I've been thinking about it. So there's another one. Tell me what y'all think about uh, seeing me make the graboids from Tremor. Big giant worm creature. Alright, let's go ahead and do the legs now. 
Well, matter of fact, I think this video is getting a little long and I've been trying to keep these short. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video off now while I finish this up. And we'll be back for any finishing touches. Alright.